Hello, my name is Timothy Fazio, and today I'm here to talk about video games and activism and how they're innately tied together. Um, now, this video will be split up into two parts, the first part being the activism part, where I go over some of the examples of companies using video games to promote important ideas and some of the great stuff that's come from that. And the second part will be the journey of the development of my own game that I made for this project. But with that out of the way, let's get started into part one, the activism part. This is Plasticity, a game made by a group of college students at Southern California University about pollution and the future that it could bring. And for this game, I was able to score an interview with someone paramount to the production of it. So, if you would be uh, so so kind to introduce yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Carla Heidelberg, and I'm a professor of teaching in biology and in environmental studies. Carla had one of the most important parts of the game, making the message heard and understood. All right, so a couple years back, I think like two or three, um, uh, you were involved with the, the making of plasticity. And I just wanted to ask you, like, um, what was your part in that? And like, how much, how, was, how much did you contribute? And um, how was it like? Yeah, so a group of students from um, the gaming, I guess it would be cinema graphics. Um, and cinema graphics and communications and I can't remember what the third one was but they were gaming students and they had self-assembled for a term project to um, handle to tackle a sustainability themed game that would engage people at an early age about what they defined as important topics well, what they wanted they had all the skills they needed they had unbelievable skill sets in computer programming in gaming in communication um, and what they were looking for was a science advisor to meet with them uh, both individually in in the individual there were probably 20 people on their team um, and we met weekly in various portions of the team and their job was to pitch to me the progress that they had made to show me what they had done and, and to make sure that the science was believable and yeah. and and appropriate and the game itself also had a significant impact as well on the message that it was trying to spread um how much of an impact do you think it had like ab about like spreading the message of like pollution yeah. and all that um we used um the environmental studies some of the environmental studies classes to test the gaming uh software as they were developing it to decide if it was an effective use or not and so for our environmental studies students it provided them the opportunity to see how science communication can be done in different ways so i think it had a big impact they then hmm. After they finalized it, they actually went on and they won a national award. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the the game went got picked up by a, um, a publisher is not the right word developer. Yeah, it's very important for games like Plasticity to be made and to be talked about. Gaming is such a big part of entertainment nowadays, and having these messages be spread through them is important for getting that message out. So, that's all I had to talk about for Plasticity. If you like to play the game for yourself, it's free on your computer. And now I'm going to move on to the other game that I'd like to talk about. This is Alba, a wildlife adventure, created by a small team of just 30 people called Us Two Games. Now, before I get into what the game is about, I'd like to talk about what the game has been able to accomplish after its release. So, in 2022, Us Two Games released Alba, and with the release of it, they said that they would plant a tree for every copy sold. 
and about one year later, they would reach the monumental goal of one million trees planted, which is crazy, at least to me. I mean, thinking about it, this is a team of 30 people, a small little indie team, and they managed to get one million trees planted, which is crazy. And they're still ongoing with it too, so. Personally, they're us two games is a important company to me. I mean, I've been playing their games for ever since I was little, so it means a lot. It's crazy to see what they've done. Now for the game itself, it's about a young girl, Alba, attempting to stop the destruction of a nature reserve in her grandparents' town. The mayor of this town wants to build a hotel on top of the nature reserve, but through the power of a petition, Alba is trying to stop him. The game itself has a lot of messages about nature and the importance of preserving and protecting it, and, in my opinion, is a really good and fun game. So, that ends part one, the activism part, and before I get on to part two, I'd just like to clear something up real quick. Um, it's not going to be the most comprehensive guide to video gaming making. Um, to do that, it would probably be an hour long, and this video is according to Brightspace, only supposed to be five minutes long. Oopsies. <laughs> so, yeah, you, if you want a more comprehensive guide, I have the resource that I use to make my video in the description. It should be cited down there. So, if you want to, take a look. Without further ado, I'll show you how I made my own game. Okay, so to start off, I'm going to be making a Top Town 2D game, and to do that, I am using Unity. You can use really any um, video game maker. It's just I like Unity. And I'm going to be loading up the 2D core, and then once this is done processing, open it up. That's where the next step's going to be. So now that we're in, we're going to want to bring over some assets. I have some free assets made by Analog Studios that I will be using. And then with the at these assets, we can essentially single every one of the little things out. So you can see all the different animations, all the different sprites are all there. They, we want to single them out. So what we can do is we can go to the sprite editor, we can go to slice, and we can go by this, and clearly that's too big of a grid. We go 16 by 16. Oh, sorry, 32 by 32. By 32. It gets every single one of these into its own little square. And then we can slice it. And hit apply. And what that does is it gives us all the little sprites in their own as their own little thing. So what we're gonna do next is take we'll take this and now this is our player. We're gonna name this player aptly. Name it player. Then we'll zero and zero out. And now we have our little guy. So now what we're gonna wanna do is to make this a prefab and to do that, we're gonna create a new folder, name it player, and essentially drag the player sprite into here. And making it a prefab means that it's gonna, it's gonna be able to be called upon multiple times, which is important. So what we can do now is go to 2D Tile Map Rectangular. This will create a tile map, and essentially it's going to be the, the sprites, like the, the ground and all that. Um, and I'm going to set the scale to 0 0.16 because that's the scale that this is on. Alright, so what we can do is in the tile palette, we can make a palette. We'll just name it forest, say. We'll create that, create a folder 
right here name forest sure or forest oh yeah, yeah, yeah forest tile set let's select that photo all right so now through the tile palette we're gonna make a tile palette so we're going to create a folder we'll name it just like forest tiles let's say and then we're gonna create tile palette we're gonna hit forest we're gonna create science of forest tiles now what we can do is i've already pre-sliced these so you can see all the pieces are individual we can drag and drop and we'll just throw all the tiles into there this is going to take a second but once it's done we'll have all the tiles that we want over here so after a little slip up um my first ooh, that's not good my first uh sprites were messed up so now we are able to if i stop editing it we can essentially pull from this and start drawing on our little game and now just get creative make a little sun i don't know so what we can do next is create another tile map and this one is going to for, be for ground objects and essentially we're going to make it a higher order in the layer than the bottom layer we'll just make it three say and then we can grab some of these and should be its own layer yep, they go be able to put some like small little decorations on top of the layer without actually ruining the bottom layer okay so i've gone on and added a little um stuff for rigid body i've changed up some of the settings and next thing we got to do is go to here and we're gonna go well we're gonna make a script um for actually controlling the player and then that's gonna be probably the last thing that i do just to keep this short and for to code, you're gonna need a code viewer. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So let's go over that right now. So this is it. This is uh, the code so far. This the default um, once you open it up. Um, and I'm gonna cut back to after I do all the coding, <laughs> not to bore you all. So yeah, I'll be back. All right, so this ended up being my final code. It's a, a bunch of, a bunch of that. Um, I'm not really exactly the most qualified to explain it all, but what I can show is if we hit the play button, it's gonna take a second, and then this little guy's moving around. And so this is where I'm going to end the second part of this, the making part. Um, clearly it's, I mean, there are no animations. You can just run off the screen. It's not polished, but um, to keep the video as short as possible, I'm going to end it here. All right. So you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I just wanted to say that this is probably the most fun I've ever had making a school project. Uh, that's why it's so long. I just went along with it. It was just a lot of fun to make. Um, before I go, just wanted to say that all the credits for all the information that I got and used in this video are in the description below if you're wondering. With that, thank you for watching. I've been Tim.